it. Thank you, Marcus. Hello, everybody. Oh, that's great. Got a nice mixture of folk. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I, after all the excitement, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I, I, I have such great faith in my comrade, Marcus, that uh, I didn't think too much about actually how we were going to proceed into this next session. I was so focused on the other things, but our plan, when you've all joined us, is um, is for Marcus and I to, for, to talk for five minutes or so, five, ten minutes maximum, and then just really have a discussion and open up questions. Um, what do you think, Marcus? Do we, should we ask people to introduce themselves briefly or should we do that as part of getting people to respond, maybe? Maybe that'd be a good way of doing it. I, I think it would be very nice to, to get to know each other and I, I, I can start. So I'm, I'm not in the UK, unfortunately, but I'm in Finland, the snowy Finland where we are expecting a summer to come and Citizen Network is, is about local and global at the same time. So I'm, I'm very glad to meet all of you here today in our uh, closed room where we can talk uh, about matters um, as they're supposed to be. And I'm very glad to represent Citizen Network and everything that is happening in Citizen Network uh, today and also talk about the future together with you. Uh, my story um, links with, with Simon's that I've been involved in citizenship action um, since I was a teenager. Uh, um, I was very active in the environmental movement, uh, but also in, in culture, um, for example, in music. I'm, uh, for example, um, a member of the oldest hip hop band of Finland. So if you ever hear music coming from Finland, so I know everybody there. Finland is very small, we are all related. So if you meet anybody coming from Finland, they're, they're probably my cousins or little cousins. So uh, eventually the, the world is large and I, I, I used to work in, in business, in accounting, and I thought that, hey, there must be something else. So in, uh, 3 a.m. Uh, at, a, at a discotheque, my friend said, hey, hey Marcus, how about um, getting yourself another occupation? So I, I went to uh, study nursing in an international course with uh, people coming from 14 different countries, all of us having uh, some, some other profession, professional background. So I thought that when, when I graduate, I will go to Afghanistan because they, they said that they, they needed some nurses. But I ended up four kilometers away from my home, working with people with intellectual disabilities in a very uh, innovative uh, non-governmental organization called Lucht Lantern. And this um, organization was um, built uh, and founded by uh, nurses and other professionals that used to work in, in the city services. And it was so bad that they thought that, hey, they leave the institution and let's do everything differently than the way that it, it, it used to be. So uh, immediately they, they um, um, uh, took um, a sailing ship and started to sail around the world because uh, this kind of taking risks mentality was not part of the social and health services in the beginning of the, in the 90s. And, 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 and so forth. So I, I immediately catched up this kind of mentality that, hey, everything is possible. I didn't know that the social and health sector uh, is, is quite rigid, at least in, in Finland. I don't know how is it in UK, but um, uh, we, we ended up doing some, some, some uh, innovative stuff. For example, um, starting um, our own record label, and supporting uh, bands uh, with people with intellectual disabilities. Uh, I used to arrange clubs and, and concerts. And eventually one of the bands called Perti Kurikan Nimipäivät uh, became hugely popular in Finland. And in the end represented Finland 2015 in the Eurovision Song Contest with the shortest song 
ever one minute 26 seconds uh, about why I have to do all of these things. So I'm, I'm still in the mode of doing all these things at the same time as I started to develop a social and uh, healthcare innovation in Finland. Uh, I started to develop um, youth. Um, um, it was like the European Union uh, youth projects with people with intellectual disability and mobility uh, programs uh, in, in Brussels. And, and then eventually I ended up um, leaving Luch to, to, to work in an umbrella organization of uh, culture and well-being in Finland, supporting uh, 43 organizations locally. As you know, uh, international uh, activism is not very popular uh, in, in many countries, so it, it's ma made difficult. So in, eventually the, the idea came that, hey, what is the what is the place for the rest of us? What is the place for people with intellectual disabilities wanted to create a change in the world systemically together with other people? So um, I started to campaign for um, uh, new laws around self-directed support. And fortunately, I, I met Simon uh, and uh, he traveled to Finland to, to help our poor country and, and then eventually uh, I, I got interested in all this work that he is doing around Center for Welfare Reform. And we met a lot of other people in Finland as well that had, had the same kind of passion, but they couldn't do it in their own organization. So this kind of change agent mentality is very prominent now in, in Finland. So I'm now supporting campaigns and, and, and projects that help these change agents inside their organization and help net, networking and, and, and uh, systemic action. So 2016 was it, Simon, that, that then eventually was it in New Zealand, people came together and, and say, hey, perhaps the citizenship framework is, is something that works for, for most of us in, in, inside the um our our network of friendship and trust so i was quickly um uh, thrown in into this mesmer mesmerizing idea of how about coming together and and joining forces and and talking about values and and creating impact together and as i i have this kind of punk band do-it-yourself mentality, I also say, uh, thought, that, thought about that, how about supporting people's uh, wish to do it their own way. So uh, I got interested in, in systemic change and systemic practices, and that has led me to collaborate with the United Nations and OECD and all, all these other organizations that we are learning at the same time um, the systemic thinking because the challenges that we face today are so dire that we have to accelerate the learning uh, happening in these networks and we have to at the same time as we are building these structures learn how to do it and in this think tank mentality it's usually experts or people in high power or people with um, money who are drawn in to think about the future of the societies we thought that perhaps there could be uh, a network for the rest of us. So Citizen Network is building now structures and we have now um, founded a cooperative together with a professor Iro Jussila who is a, a very well-known cooperative um, expert. So we are exploring the possibility that how about this using this cooperative model which is very well related to the ideals of, of networking and, and um, sharing resources and also creating economy around uh, uh, creating change in the world. So I'm, I'm in this platforming mindset at, at the moment and, and uh, putting all, all my efforts in, into this uh, in, in the moment. So one of the things that we have is the Citizen Network TV, which is a community media. So you create your own, own uh, story you can change the narratives. They are very 
influential in, in changing the, the course of our faith and also creating a community where you can share and learn and also uh, learn about the messages that you're creating together with other people. Uh, I'm also very well involved with the Citizen Fest movement, which was an idea that we are doing these festivals to celebrate citizenship um, um, in, in each of these countries. So why don't we join forces and share content, share audiences, learn from each other, and create a festival that never ends. So I'm very happy and joyful to be here and to talk with you about Citizen Network and what it can offer to our partnership uh, together with Simon. So Simon, off you go. <laughs> well, what I'll do is I've, I've spoken enough and there's probably enough in what I said before that indicates. So maybe we could just get some questions and thoughts and challenges. We have, uh, I don't know, I've actually lost track of the time. I was over, over preparing is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so but maybe if if you could ask a question and, and just say who you are a little bit and so is anybody willing to just go first there must be questions because i think what we're talking about is might seem a bit wild maybe not but there must be some questions that you have anybody dare to go first wave a hand or i, I think we can use chat there's a couple of folk with their videos off but if you're not careful i'll pick on somebody because you must have a question Yes, Michael. Yeah, uh, I work at uh, Transition Network, supporting the tr Transition Times movement. Um, I just wondered, like, how how much uptake have you had in terms of the network, and how much engagement are you getting? Have you got like an online platform that you're using to for people to communicate? Yeah, so we don't. Well, the engagement. It's a good question. We have, like I say, we've got a membership and then we have these different things that are going on. We have not created, um, we use Slack behind the scenes for, for people who are kind of, although that's fairly new, we've really used, I don't know, I, I've kind of tried to avoid, my, my view is that people, especially folk who are not in systems, don't really want to try and learn too much new stuff. So we have a very active Facebook group, the YouTube channel that Marcus has described as getting a lot of people involved in just producing stuff. We've had these events. Um, yeah, so it's that kind of thing. We have a very regular newsletter. We're all, there's lots of things like that, but it's, uh, yeah, we're using, I would say, as generic platforms at the moment, Michael, and trying to weave them together into some kind of coherence. M Marcus, would you agree with that or...? It's my sense of our strategy. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, as I have my background in, in tech, technology and, and computers, so I'm, I've been involved in, in various technological uh, developments since 1999, and none of them work. So we have to, have to uh, sort of use what works for that purpose. And, and that's different to, uh, with, uh, from, from people to people. So the orchestrators of these systems, they have to be quite skilled because the data is coming from, from various sources and also to somehow um, monitor the, the, the input and output of data and also the impact it, it creates. And um, uh, I think these technological advance, uh, advancements that we have uh, now um, learned during the COVID crisis uh, might make citizen network uh, work easier in the future as people are more skilled. Um, for example, I'm now working in the rural side of Bangladesh and uh, with uh, teaching how uh, autistic children can use telephones in telling about uh, their, their ethnic background and their culture to other people in a um, society that has a lot of control. So I, I guess, the, Michael, we need your help. So if, if you're good in these kind of things, then uh, we have to learn from each other and uh, offer these opportunities. Yesterday, I was in contact to South Africa uh, with a band called uh, Sounds of the South. And they are a group of uh, uh, hip hop artists that are do, doing um, campaigns and 
um, social action in, in their area. And they said, Marcus, well, we don't have electricity. So your talk about telephone technology doesn't work here. So now we are trying out to create this kind of mobile studio slash venue that can go into the community and offer learning and these uh, things that, that people need. Because there's Maybe a what, huge need of people contacting each other. I don't know what people think, well, Michael. One of the things, maybe this is true of everything, but we we started this with no money, just with love. That's the everything has been driven by. We want to change the world. We should change how we behave. We should cooperate more. Let's figure stuff out. So, and then people have like in the UBI Lab Network, which is part of Citizen Network. It's it's WhatsApp and Twitter has been has been the platform. So the the little labs all come up and become visible on Twitter. That's their kind of social place. Um, but behind the scenes, WhatsApp is the technology that people are using. Um, but that's not what we're doing for the neighborhood democracy movement. Actually, that's not the shape it's taken at the moment. Where it's been very much about um, actually just Zoom and meetings and and Eventbrite and um, and a bit of Twitter, but and, and so we're just improvising our way through these things. Where we start with, well, we've got to make it work. What can we what can we use? And then you build from the skills of the people. So we don't really have any presumption about what the technical platform is, other than we've got to make it work at the lowest possible cost because we don't have any money. I mean, there, there's been. Uh, I mean, I've been part of a research project called Transit. Which which looked at uh, which interviewed like a, over a hundred community led sort of well community led movements, and they come out they come out with some really interesting stuff uh, like an interesting model around how how to build and sustain networks, and and different different roles and functions that networks have. All of what you've talked about would cut, would fall into into these. Um, it's I mean it's, it's a really useful uh, model to to look at. Um, because I think that one of the things, I mean, because I'm thinking we're we're about to launch a project in uh, in transition network where where we're looking at a lot a lot more about how we build more community interconnectedness and and networks within that movement, but also outside it with like like not similar movements in order to, in order to create more change. Because you know, obviously, if you've got more people connecting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think you're right. There is it is a challenge, and the tech is a challenge. And we we just ran a online conference called the What Next Summit, and we used a platform called Nudge, which was used which was used a bit during um, the actual summit, but post the summit, it's not being used. Mm -hmm. And I think there's you know that's because there's not the engage there's not engagement on it, or we're not we're not putting stuff on there to engage. So it's it is like you say, it's like it's there's a lot i think there's a lot that you need to do to keep a network going especially at the start and then it's like it's i always say it's a bit like um you know if you're at a wedding and no one's dancing you know you need to get four people that dancing and then everyone will get up and start dancing that's a bit like network development you know if no one's dancing in your network no one's gonna get no one else is gonna get up and get involved so you've got to you've got to almost pump prime networks in a way i mean and, and with something like UBI, I think because it's such a a hot topic in a way, it it almost the UBI as a thing in itself is like the four people dancing, and everyone see, see, can see it because it's had such a prominent thing. So with certain things, it will work. It, it's almost like they manifest themselves, but other other things can be a, a little bit more challenging. I think in terms of, um, especially if it's not there's not like a singular focus. If it's more about like let's try and get like i think the challenge we're 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 face we'll face in trying to do this project is how do you get disparate different pe different networks or different people talking to each other who've got slight like different views or not aligned necessarily because i think that's where the interesting stuff really happens is when you get like lots of different um you know when you get like you know your hip-hop artist and your permaculture gardener and your you know the learning disability network or whatever all in all in one place weird weird things emerge that you would never have expected to happen 
but it's that the challenge is how you get people how you get people into the same place and and how you do that so yeah yeah i mean and that's very much i think where like we are we have these kind of interconnections but there is a definite difference between our ubi work which you say very singular focus mm. and then actually this broader concept of citizen network and then things like neighborhood democracy which are not the same they're not as simple as basic income yeah. barnaby had a so barnaby could i bring you in uh, yeah i was just wondering uh, what michael said that he said there's um the first networking organization you mentioned i missed it i've got what next summit and nudge the first one you mentioned oh tra it, transit so it's um transit. it was a research project i'll see if i can find the link and put it in the chat for people thank okay. you yeah that'd be cool what about anybody else got a question or a thought you don't have to have a question i just having a, a strong opinion's good Yeah, Rob. Hi, um, my name's Rob. I'm from a production company called Content Creatives. We have a uh, little project that we, we've been running for the last year called Youth Citizen Service. Um, so the idea that we have is uh, to take um, content. The original idea was, was from uh, the Consumer Action Group, the old style forum. And we said we got all this, this advice for uh, consumers, but no one visits forums anymore. So how can we replicate it for a, a young audience? So we work with um, youth organisations um, across London and Essex. Uh, we've got a, a relationship with City Hall, with, with some of their, their peer outreach team, the, the, young, the young team that work there. Also homeless charities across Essex and, and London. And we, what we do is we, we offer them opportunities to be our presenters. Um, so we kind of write the scripts uh, for them um, and they present it and it's for a young audience. So. The, the penny drop for me, I think a year ago, we were running a, a brainstorming session with a group of young people and a 17 year old, we were talking about her consumer rights and she said, can I just make the point? I don't know what I need to know. And that really resonate with me where it's like, we take a lot of this stuff for granted. So what we've started to do is to kind of take the, the, um, uh, the initiative with things like UBI, which young people maybe don't know about. So we, we, we we just released yesterday a, a UBI explainer video. We're releasing another one today. And it's specifically for young people. Things that, again, we might all take for granted, but we're just trying to, to, to do an explainer video for young people. And so I suppose the, the thing that I kind of wanted to raise is, is, is how do we reach those hard to reach audiences, those uh, audiences that maybe they don't visit the same places that we do. Uh, maybe they don't have that same um, knowledge base or experience base that we have. And it's how we bring them along for the ride. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of throw out there that we, we, we do it as a pretty much a labour of love. It, it's a marketing channel for us, but we invest in that. So if there are subjects that, that you guys want covered, um, we're happy to, have a, have to talk to you and we'll have a young audience presenting that. That sounds brilliant. I mean, I think that is, um, Marcus has led a lot of our work around kind of video and television and uh, so that is a practical area where we're dead interested it is amazing what people can do for themselves although there's always a bit of chaos around that i've got to say <laughs> the, the perfectionist in me is sometimes busy with all my wife tidying up the youtube page and things which uh, is and these things that escape from you um, but i think the one thing I don't, I think about citizen networks work or generally the work I've been trying to do over the last few decades is I think sometimes going where it's hard is where you learn the best. There's like, like and it's kind of the opposite logic to what everybody tells you you should be doing. <laughs> everybody says you should go for the easy wins, don't they? But I actually think it's kind of quite good to kind of really figure out how to make stuff work for everybody and then try and figure out what that takes. So um, I don't think we've mastered that with Citizen Network, but certainly like some of the groups involved are groups that from an outs a typical kind of, I don't know, middle class systems professional perspective, expectations are very low. When you look at what people do, it's bloody brilliant. And it, a lot of the time, I think it's about amplifying what people can do or just giving people a few tools. You know, it's not like going on a training course. It's like just 
give people a chance, you know, open the door, I think sometimes. I mean, I don't think we're in any position to, as it were, do that universally, but we can kind of show people what's possible, perhaps in a way that's quite surprising. I don't know, Marcus, if you've got any thoughts on that. I totally agree that, that um, fear is something that blocks us. And fear protects us too. That's, that's why we fear things. But, but more experienced and skilled you are, then you, you have this kind of um, capacity to take what's coming. And if we sort of protect ourselves of all these mistakes that are very well related in, into design thinking, learning about mistakes and, and so forth, then this kind of new kind of culture can elevate us and make us feel secure in, even in these uncertain times. So uh, when, uh, Michael, you were talking about technology and, and people getting connected, so um, the feeling of connectedness is very uh, important um, um, meter of well, well-being. There's theories of mental health that say, say, say that, that um, you have to have a meaning in your life. You have, have to have a community, uh, a feeling of connectedness. One person that you can say that, hey, at least once in a while, that person gets what I'm, I'm talking about. And uh, this kind of, um, I've, I've learned in this international work that, that it's, it's quite same everywhere I go. There's a, always something that you can um, connect with. And um, for me, it's, it's culture, art, uh, every uh, expression. And uh, when we are talking about um, um, contacting and collaborating and creating partnership, this kind of shared experiences are very, very important. So the Citizen Fest concept includes that, that for example, Rob, you could have with, with the group that you are having a Citizen Fest and then call in 128 other artists from all over the world to join your festival and vice versa. And quickly the, the, the people will see that, hey, there are, these skills are useful so, for somebody else. And that's a very empowering feeling when you, when you can teach somebody else with, with something. And there's a lot of unused resources uh, all over the world because we expect so little so uh, we need everybody and that's that's the I, I guess one of the the main values of, of citizen network the, yeah i remember when we, we kind of created the first citizen fest in glasgow it is an interesting example i think because actually we we there was a really boring conference going on in glasgow <laughs> really boring conference but it meant that some of our allies could get their plane tickets paid to come to Glasgow. So we said, well, let's do something really interesting on the side of this. And particularly that would showcase the kind of talents of ordinary people, like uh, that would offset this kind of rather stale academic conference. And, um, and, and, and I just, I don't know where the citizen fest, I just thought well, that was a cool title. And I said to my friends in Glasgow, could you, could you create one? And, and what does that mean, Simon? So, well, we believe in inclusion. So why don't we go out and connect with other people who are trying to fight for inclusion from different perspectives? And said so it was the first time they'd ever done that. So that they, a lot of them, my allies were in, who'd worked with people with complex learning difficulties, intellectual disabilities. They were starting to connect with people whose battles were about gender or sexuality, connect with people who's thinking about mental health connecting with people who were dealing with, um, you know, racial prejudice or, um, you know, the hostile environment. And they find, well, we've got tons in common, actually. But the system never brings you together because from the system's point of view, you're all belong in different silos. You're all the responsibility of somebody else. And for the reasons you describe, in a way, people are a bit frightened to go, it's hard enough, isn't it? So how do you make common cause? A festival turns out to be a really cool way of doing it. You know, people know somebody who's great at drumming and the drummers come along. And, you know, so it ends up being something very um, creative because it connects in a different way. And then people start to realise they've got more 
more in common with people. So then it also has a, a political or a social impact that, that's hard to manage, but actually is, I think, very powerful. And we've had people, I mean, one of the people who led on that, Michael McEwen, who is a, a young man with uh, learning difficulties, but he's now become a kind of really significant kind of journalist, television, radio journalist. He's, he's just learned to be very confident and has go out, finds audiences and finds people to interview and, and teams up with people. And a lot of that's come out of that process, I think. Sorry, I think Pam had a question and, and, and uh, yeah, Pam. Hi, everybody. Um, I've been listening um, intently just to listen to what everybody has to say. It's really interesting. So um, thanks for the conversation. Uh, I work for an organization called Weevolution, um, and we are mainly primarily based in Scotland, um, but we actually have um, uh, other sort of groups throughout. We deal with self-reliant groups. Um, and it's basically collaboratives of three to five, ten people who work together in small groups um, to support each other. Um, Self-reliant groups is what it is. But one of the things that we put on twice a year is a, is a sort of gathering, what we call a peer gathering. And when you were saying about the festival, it is about having people connected um, and, you know, being part of something that's bigger. And so we've got lots of people who are in small groups who get together and become, you know, big parts of bigger groups. And suddenly you've got a movement. And, I, you know, I think it's really interesting what you're saying about that connectivity, especially in the last year. I think people all over the world have felt um, disconnected from, you know, from their normal networks. And so to see something like this happening is, is exciting and um, just interested to find out how we can contribute towards that. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And I'll just say hello to Chris, who's joined us. Chris Nifor is uh, the Citizen Network Lead for Africa. It's a rather big job that Chris has taken on. <laughs> Hi, Chris. <laughs> hello, colleagues. How are you all? Um, Chris, so, yeah, yeah. I, Sorry, I, 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 I kind of joined late. I was um, involved in some other, some other meetings all day. Um, I'll just have to tag along and um, catch up with what you guys are saying as we go along. But it's good to be here and hello once again. We're just having a very general conversation about what Citizen Network is and what we've been trying to do and what we could learn about how to grow and strengthen networks, I think. Um, so glad you made it, Chris. That's good. What about um, is um, Bar Barnaby again? Yeah, that's cool. There we go, unmuted. Um, so uh, I was wondering, firstly, what are your um, uh, wildest ambitions? What, what, kind of, what, what do you want to um, see replicated in, in the world? And um, then secondly, um, also if you wanted to um, become part of, there's a, a Global Democracy Initiative launch on the 29th of May. Um, so I've, I've got myself all, um, embroiled in several organisations that are about collaboration, so locally, nationally and globally. Um, every every Monday now, there's the Democracy Handbook that um, all organisations involved in any kind of uh, democratic reform or innovation um, share their what they're up to each week. And then um, the, the Global Democracy Initiative is a global democratic organisations coming together to to do what they are asking the rest of the world to do, which is to work together despite their differences to tackle global problems. So, um, and uh, so I'm the, the organization that I founded is called Global People Power. And, and so we are looking to create um, uh, global rules without global rulers through citizens assemblies. And then to, to use our vote to, to invite whole, the whole of humanity to become earth citizens and um, and then to go on the street to, to to invite them to do so, and then they would, and then also inviting politicians to become Earth citizens who agree to cooperate globally to implement the, the rules come up with by citizens assemblies, and then the whole sort of um, high-minded purpose behind that is to to celebrate our individuality and um, our our culture and our common humanity as we tackle a 
a perfect storm of planetary problems together. So, um, and I've also worked for Mencat for three years as well. So the more I'm finding out about you, which I found out about today, there, there seems to be lots we have in common. And the, the last aspect of global people power is creating music, which all calls for, there's so much music where all the lyrics just says, we need to work together. We are essentially um, like a, a, a human species first and foremost, and then our culture and our individuality behind that. So um, I was, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased that I found you and and looks like we will be talking more. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like there's a massive overlap. I mean, I think Marcus, Chris and I could all share a perspective on our highest hopes. Mm. Mine is might be a high and a modest one. For me, the idea of citizenship, which I, I think your definition is very much close to mine, Barnaby, that actually taking that seriously, at, like at a per, for people to take that seriously as a, which for me goes back to, you know, very ancient thinking about what it is to be a human being and what's valuable about being a human being. That would be my highest hope in one sense, because I think almost everything else flows from that. And, and we've lost a sense, I think very radically, we've lost a sense of ourselves as citizens and, and that affects our attitude to democracy, but also to, to social justice, to, all of the different kind of prejudice and conflicts in the world are all affected by the same thing. And, and it means that we don't have, we don't own the capacity that we do have to tackle the problems that we have like the environmental crises. And so in a funny way, mine's kind of small, but I think potentially big. And I don't know, uh, Marcus, what would, you, what would you describe as your highest ambition for Citizen Network? Um, I would like, the citizen network to be like an ongoing question of what citizenship for all means and that's a, like like life you have to live it and that's you have to uh, also renew the 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 story uh, all over again uh, now i'm i'm thinking about my my children what well, what are the skills that i can learn together with them that will um, would support their um, mental health, their physical health, and a feeling of hope uh, about the future. And we have all these capabilities, all this technology, but still we are, we are looking for meaning in, in our lives. And I think that um, my mother taught me that you have to take care of your family, your local surroundings, and then if you have time and power and capabilities, larger and larger things. And I, I feel that I, I'm doing what my, my mother taught me to do in Citizen Network, of creating a platform, opportunities for people to learn and, and to feel more secure about themselves and about the future. Uh, I, I have this kind of sense that we can do it because we are doing at the same time. Like Barnaby, you mentioned, there are other groups also learning and doing great great things so uh we are meeting each other and we are sharing this the this learning but also sharing a feeling and it's it's a very strong feeling when you feel connected with other people and and that's that's something that uh, we should focus more than 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 uh, money and what what do we have in the physical world that doesn't help much Chris, what, what would you, I know you're catching up, but, uh, but what would you say is your highest hope for Citizen Network? Um, I'd like to use um, the analogy of um, the vaccines in our present um, COVID environment. We have um, vaccines with different names, Moderna, Pfizer, j and j Sputnik, you just name it, but they all intend to achieve the very same thing. We are all different. We have different ideas. We have different opinions, but we could easily unite around a common cause. And what is that common cause? The cause of humanity. We say we are citizens. We all can have very different ways to look at it, but we can all agree that citizenship is a fundamental value for every one of us in the world. How do we achieve that? It's an ongoing question, but we look at it from different angles, but we can easily agree on 
very simple basics, achieving and attaining citizenship through any means, through any method, and we continue to evolve and move towards it. If citizen network could be a thread that tries to bind every loose end together, that would be my highest, wildest dream. <laughs> Thank Thanks, Chris. I mean, I, we've got, I don't, I've, because I've lost track, I think we've already got five, 10 minutes left or like maybe 15. I want to try and pick on Mary and Wes, <laughs> just as provoke, uh, Wes I can't, Wes is just a picture, but Mary, so maybe I'm going to start with Mary because I can see your face. Um, Mary, what's your thoughts, questions, anything you like? Yeah, sure. I mean, I was going to jump in at some point, just uh, didn't end up having to, shall I got picked on? Um, yeah, so I'm Mary, I work in policy, I'm from the National Survivor User Network, and we're a coalition, like a network of um, community groups and individuals who have lived experience of mental ill health, distress or trauma. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm interested to hear in like, I think something that comes up as someone who works in the charity sector when hearing about sort of like global things is, yeah, I mean, I think Marcus, you said that global is not super popular. There's, it's kind of tainted in lots of ways because of, um, I guess, like, you know, um, exploitative practice, power imbalances, this kind of stuff. And I guess, yeah, it's to anyone who wants to answer is like, how do you guys overcome this? Like, how do you reckon with this history and then also have like equitable kind of partnership in going forward in these global movements? Because I mean, yeah, they can't really be that global, right? If, if, if the leadership is kind of quite homogenous and yeah. So how do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I mean, I suppose it helps when you've got no money. If we had money, <laughs> some of the dilemmas would be different. But as the, everybody's working from love, I'm not quite sure. But I think, I mean, that it is a real genuine question as we're trying to work out some sustainable structures and we don't know the answer. So like one of our big partners is Manavadeya in India. Um, the value of money in India or the value of money in Africa is very different to the value of money in Finland. So it goes to the other extreme and the, the cost base are different and the resources are different. and. I don't think we have any answers to that really. I think what we're doing is at the moment is just connecting around trust and love and common cause. And um, we're not buying anybody's services really. You know, we're, we're not making sneakers. <laughs> we're saying in a way like uh, Chris's experiences and battles in Africa are as real and valid as Marcus is in Finland, and there are, but there are very different contexts. What can we learn and what can we share? And what can we learn from what we're doing in, in Britain? So I, I don't know, I, I, to me, I'm gonna put a more positive spin on it. I don't, I don't see, I, the negativity I saw in some of the responses to the Development Citizen Network was we were escaping the national state paradigm. I don't think anybody, I think what we were saying was, uh, I actually don't really care what the Prime Minister thinks. I mean, I do have a particularly low opinion of our current Prime Minister, but even if it wasn't him, why do we why do we think about politics all the time through that framework anyway? It's so broken. And why do we think about power and influence and expertise through those frameworks? They're so broken. They're unbelievably broken. Um, and maybe I've been just a bit damaged by working in the public policy space for a while and then seeing how irrational it is. I, I find it more fruitful to go where people are genuinely interested in solving a problem, wherever that is. And then how, what can we do about that together? So whether that's Finland or Spain, or I find that more interesting because people are genuinely trying to do the work. Um, so I, I, I kind of just think, well, that's kind of cool and it's more useful and and I think if my friends in Glasgow can connect with friends in New Zealand or Africa then actually that's just more enjoyable than focusing on what sorry somebody in Whitehall thinks yeah I don't know sorry that's okay I don't know it's not really doesn't really answer your question I think Michael wants to come in as well, but and Marcus and Chris might have a thought, and then I must still chase up. I think we have 15 minutes, so we could still get something from Wes and or explore this some more. But Michael, did you want to come in on this 
Uh, yeah, just, I mean, just because it's something that we, I mean, we, we have, we, I mean, we, we are doing is like we, I mean, Transition Network is, it's an international movement. And uh, I think we've got over 30 countries, 30 different areas then. I mean, we, do, I mean, it does tend to align with nations, um, but I mean, that that's because move, movements, it's a local movement. So the movements are locally based. So it tends to be geographical. Um, but the, you know, we've, we've had to really work hard at, um, having processes and shared governance of um when you actually start to do things that you want where you want where you do if you do have money or you're or you're trying to create some form of change or develop trainings and, and thing as all kinds of things that a hubs network can do um but we've i mean we've been spending the last like six years sort of supporting an international network of hubs and and we do think very carefully about like equity and social justice and and how decisions are made and the, the processes that you use in order to do that just come back to what mary was saying i mean there's and it's not easy it is quite it can be pretty challenging and difficult just because because of the you know the differences that you're you're coming in you know differences of people's experience and 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 where they're at and and the different problems that you're facing in different countries so there's all, all this stuff um, I mean, we still have alongside that. Obviously, we've got the uh, what we call the informal, the informal relationships that people have. But we do have a more formalized structure, and 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 I suppose could just just to reflect back a little bit on. I mean, I agree very much with what you're saying, Simon. I think that most of the systems are completely unfit for purpose now. The challenge that we have is that we're, as we're building networks, we still don't have power in 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 the sense of we have a certain type of power but we don't have power in the sense of like you know at the moment the power to create policy in in england or well, the uk at the moment is held by the the tory government which you know arguably are, are elected under a, a system which is completely biased to, towards them and and also you know, doesn't represent the views of a lot of people in this country. I, I think something like 25% of the country have actually voted for the people in power. But they they sort of do have the power in lots of ways. And it's, um, and I think the challenge that, the, the big challenge that we will have globally, I mean, globally, in a way, is like, I think that there are a huge amount of vested interests internationally which impact on all our political systems, you know, I, yeah, through, through capitalism and, and capital and the way that money, that money buys power, et cetera, et cetera. And it's when, it's when, do, when, it's the way, when a network tries, like we see it, we saw it in, and I think a classic example is like the Arab Spring, where you see a network, a network really helped to develop that, that uprising in, in that, in, in those countries or whatever. But very, very quickly, it, didn't have because it didn't have structures in place it it was very easy for that to be superseded and and they lost in a way they lost they lost what was a potential as a potential moment there where they could have gained power and you know that would have brought all kinds of problems as well but you know it's it's that thing it is an interesting i think it is something very important to think about particularly when we're thinking globally uh, as well as nationally is like what you know what are we you know because we do want power ultimately we do want power over our lives maybe a different form of power in a different structure but i think i think we're all in in this in a way because we want to have influence over how the world is and how how we're situated within it and at some point that these networks are gonna if they gain enough power they it's you know you know it's like black lives matter you know as soon as as soon as you're actually having an impact that's when you get the kickback and it was very obvious with black lives matter wasn't it that suddenly it becomes really starts to have a real impact and then and then you see these responses when you're nice and fluffy and and everyone thinks it's just like oh yeah it's just these people getting together etc cetera, etc cetera. it's all right you know that like I, you don't really have to worry about <laughs> power in a way it's when it's when you start to have some proper impact that's when power that's when power starts to go oh watch out look look what they're doing oh they might be a bit they might want a bit of our power or be a bit more you know there's a bit more something happening there we need to sort of 
get involved in that or or respond to that and and that's when you really need to think about you know that's when i think the real key thing is then if you've got structures in place to to respond to that that's i think is what what's actually quite quite important to think about i think certainly like a lot of my work michael has been around uh, this concept of self-directed support how do you change public services so people with mental health problems or disabilities have control over them and i faced exactly that with the english government kicking back and basically what i thought of destroying work <laughs> but one of the things i found as a benefit is is kind of trying to outmaneuver that by going global so we created the sds network is basically a global network of and that's partly that's to draw expertise outside the national framework that doesn't answer all the problems that mary's touching on but i guess that's just where my head's gone a little bit is like well if if the nation itself yeah you could say they're the power but we don't have to define ourselves quite like they do either no completely i mean counter power is an interesting example is, is an interesting concept is where, where you build a counter power to the existing power structure which is very much like what you're doing in a way is you're trying to separate something which is not oppositional but almost like outside of it but that does then give you the counter power because you then have your own structures or whatever, you know, and it's it's those tensions that I think, well, I think we're going to see a lot of these tensions in the, in the next 10 years yeah. of, of people demanding more say and then exist. I mean, I think we're seeing it now, the existing, the existing responses to things that are happening to me feels like a, a, the existing system is in crises and it doesn't know how to respond. And there's a new system emerging at the moment which also is sort of emergent and doesn't really, is finding its shape. So I think we're in a very interesting time at the moment. Um, I think, Ma Wes, are you, oh, Marcus wants to come in as well, but yeah, go, go. Thank you, Mar Mary. Your question was very, very on point. Mm -hmm. Sort of the rules of the game, the paradigms and, and the, the, the way we play is very important. And one very interesting opportunity is to join the cooperative. So Citizen Network is an international cooperative that can be a laboratory of all these things that we are now, now talking about. So how can we create, uh, let's say, perhaps open but closed um, system where all these uh, things emerge? For example, justice. Uh, for example, all these uh, things r that related to, to power and, uh, and how, how can we make a, a cooperative model that, that helps citizenship for all. So um, let's explore together and, and join the cooperative. You can read it there from, from the chat and um, please contact me if you're interested in taking this avenue. Wes, are you, are you, are you um, up for asking a question or something? I probably won't ask a question. Obviously, it's just been good to be, be here and listen to what everybody says. Uh, the, the introduction I wrote down earlier is the reason I'm here is because I'm interested in what our society could look like and feel like and, and how we make that happen. And obviously, what everybody's talking about in this room although that's not the direct question, is, is related to that, that uh, topic. Uh, and I think it connects everything we're talking about, doesn't it? Inclusivity, the environment, citizenship, uh, and it's all there. So it's just been great to be here. But... Thanks, Wes. All right, I've, just, I've achieved my goal of everybody saying something, so that was, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> just my personal goal. I don't know. Um, okay, so we've got like, Three minutes left. Anybody want to just say something else? Barnaby, is that an issue? Yeah. I think the, uh, the reason why I'm so pleased to find you is that um, the, the, the powers that be, it, the, their weapon of choice is division. And now it, it is a, a, a global people power. We call it international divide and rule. So um, within nations, it's um, classes, age difference and um, ethnic difference. And then internationally, where, uh, where you get popular support for policies which 
uh, are the right policies for, for people and, and the environment, big business say, well, if you implement those policies, we'll move our operations to a country with more, uh, with less regulation. So it's a, it's a global race to, to the bottom. And if through um, uh, um, Earth citizenship and citizenship networks, we, that, that, that um, counterbalances the, the, the globally mobile entities which pit nation against each other. We have to be global because the battle line for want of a better term, is global. So, and, and, and it's all about individuation, splitting people, keeping people separate, when the, the reality of nature is that, and system science tells us is that everyone and everything is interconnected. So, um, and so through global cooperation, we can, we can finally live in harmony with the nature of reality. In my opinion. <laughs> it sounds good to me, Barnaby, yes. Um, okay. I wonder what we, uh, what if, I think there's some kind, some kind of like feedback thing at the end. So I, I'm picking out like there's, there's been this really key point about the risks of exploitation and the question of governance and the challenge of governance. And there's been this question about the challenge of platforms and inclusion. I think that's an important part of it. I think that what Barnaby, you're talking about in terms of like the vision for reform of power, if you like, and what Michael was talking about were important too. So those are some of the themes, but I don't, I don't know. Well, let's see what happens and please all chip in as best you can into what happens ever next. I think we're, we can, uh, well, it we'll be closed out in 45 seconds. So why don't we just say goodbye and see you on the other side. Thank you all.